Okay, House of Pain fans, I almost have three full pages of notes for this episode. Um, let me just say, this was one, it's, it's not perfect. It's, it's, I, I think that it deserves around an 8.5 out of 10. But I thought it was a great episode nonetheless. Uh, you know how I always make these MCU references and comic book stuff. But if you've ever watched Captain America Civil War... One of my top five MCU movies, by the way. It's one of those movies where you can you can see both sides. You can see Team Cap. You can see Team Iron Man. More specifically, Tony and Steve. Due to the arguments about the Sokovia Accords, at least that part of the beginning of the movie, you could see why there were opposing sides. You could see why each side thought the way they did. And also the fact that, well, both sides are kind of in the right. And both sides are kind of in the wrong. I felt a similar way watching the, well, honestly, like three-way battle royale between Miranda, Laura, and Calvin. I will say, I really feel bad for Calvin. Even though I think that it was kind of messed up for him to just, you know, randomly put Christian on Laura like that. And he does address that. It's just that... I, I do hate that Laura was kind of being written to be over the top and somewhat unlikable. I'll admit, going on Twitter, looking at people's posts on Instagram, comments and everything, I think that now this episode has made even more people like, you know what, get rid of Laura, I want Calvin back with Miranda. And I think that's awful because I did a video about, what, 48 hours ago and I talked about how, or was it last week, basically talking about how the show seems to be pushing Miranda and Calvin back together. I was nervous about this episode. I'm like, Laura, what if um, Laura spanks Christian? But it turns out that wasn't the case. But before going further, and again, season 10, episode 18, a little discipline, which I scored 8.5 out of 10. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up to show you like it. Hit the bell icon and select all. That way you don't miss out whenever I post content on the channel. Follow me on social media. Links are in the description below. And hit subscribe as we close in on 200,000 subscribers. So there were, honestly, the Miranda, Calvin, Laura, Christian stuff, even though Christian wasn't in the episode. That was the main story that took up a bulk, bulk of the episode. I mean, even the B story with Malik didn't even take up that much time. So I'll talk about that one first. So here we go. Malik actually comes over to Curtis and Ellis' house because apparently Curtis had a lucky tie to give him for a job interview. I'm like, thank the Lord. We're finally getting Malik getting a job. Thank you. And it's ironic because of the fact that he steps in right as I believe Calvin was mentioning how, you know, um, yeah, I don't want to end up like Malik, money, uh, moneyless, womenless, and ended up with his parents. And then you have Malik coming over. And he basically says that he has a job interview at, I believe, Johnson and Oil. Calvin mentions how that's a high profile company that's been blowing up over the past few years. And he's going to be applying as a local marketing rep and as somebody that did communication advertising public relation that's a pretty decent uh, that's a pretty decent career path uh, especially for somebody who is in grad school so yeah uh yeah this is great because i remember when house of pain came in uh, season nine and i'm like wait a minute the all the advertisements and press releases were saying that this season would take place seven to eight years after the original ending of house of pain and yet Malik's still in school. And I said the only way for that to make sense is if he's in like higher learning after, you know, a four year program. Did he go back to school for a master's or did, you know, or what happened? I mean, is he pulling a Calvin? But no, he's in grad school. And I'm like, OK, this is great. This is great. So, yeah, he's been wanting to work there. And apparently he said like Lisa threw up twice this morning out of excitement and Malik's like, uh, I mean, Calvin's like, uh, Malik, big dog. I think that's, uh, because morning sickness. Oh yeah. And Ella asked if he's going to finish school and he's like, yeah, don't worry about that. I am. But it's just the fact that with the baby coming and all, I have to be a provider. I need to step up. And I really like this. I mean, even though Malik barely had a role in the episode, I just love the fact that we're getting this development for his character. And from there, uh, later on, it turns out he got a job offer. He comes back over to the house. He's talking with Floyd this time. 
And he talks about how, look, my potential boss, the guy that might end up being my boss, I noticed some things in his office that made me feel uneasy. You know, uh, I saw a black, I think he might be racist. And Floyd's like, wait, what do you mean? How do you know that? Well, I saw he had a BLM sign on his wall, but it had a line through it in a circle. Basically like, nope, no Black Lives Matter around here. He had, he saw uh, pictures of this guy with politicians who are, you know, known to be racist. And it almost felt like him being given the offer felt more like he was being, I guess you could say, an 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 affirmative action quota. Like, you know, oh yeah, they had a, it's almost like they had a quota for minorities. So did I really get this job because I'm good enough for it, this offer? Or is it because they need a certain amount of diversity in the office? And Floyd tells him that, well, racism has always been around. So in these situations, I know it kind of sucks, but sometimes you got to be in these positions to rise above the hate. Use your power and position to make the change you want to see in the world. And we actually go over to the end of the episode towards the end. Malik actually comes back over. He talks with Floyd and Ella. Floyd and Ella just want to know if he has a job or not. But he says, look, 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 I actually accepted the job because I want to be the positive change in the world. Now, I'm going to talk on this shortly. I mean, it seems like I kind of brushed over it. But to be honest, the Malik portion of the episode didn't take up that much time. And I, and it was good. It didn't take up more time than it needed to. But this is a very interesting lesson. I love the fact that you have the older characters like Floyd and Ella who are from a different era than Malik but they know about how the world can be in terms of racism and whatnot and to be honest you know a lot of older people be like boy that job has good money you better be quiet you better hey black lives matter nothing it's all about that green to be honest that sounds messed up but I love how Floyd took the approach of there's always going to be racism in the world there's always going to be hate but at the end of the day you just have to deal with it you have to rise above it you know, I'm not saying necessarily turn the other cheek per se. It's not like uh, Malik should go up in there and say, you know what, screw this job, you're anti-black and this and that. It's like, well, there's going to be people who disagree with you all the time. For example, you know, I went to Liberty University. I was on campus for years during the, what was it, the Obama re-election. And then I worked in the call center for three years during the Trump's first, you know, well, Trump when he first got elected. And yeah, being on campus, working at the school and everything, there's clearly a favoritism or bias towards a political party. And I remember one time at convocation, which was like a three times a week meetly, weekly, well, yeah, three times a week meet up in like the Vine Center. They would have speakers there. I remember uh, me and the only other brother on our dorm at the time. We skipped one of the combos because it's like, man, it was too political and everything. We weren't trying to hear that. We got wrote, written up for it, and it was like, yeah, well, it's part of the uh, thing when you come to Liberty, you have to go. It's mandatory, blah blah blah. Then it got to the point where it became more of a circus, and there were a lot of times where the convocation meetup place would just be packed because more visitors to the school would come to the convocation and students. So if we couldn't get into Vine Center, we literally just couldn't get into the Vine Center. But it's just one of those things where not everywhere you go, there's not going to, you're not going to go everywhere in the, um, the world and have people see things the way you see it. Yes, it kind of sounds like you're, I don't even want to make it sound like selling out, but you got to do what you got to do. I mean, like Malik said, he has a baby on the way and whatnot. He's been wanting to work at this job just because you might be working for somebody who might come across racist. And I'm glad the fact that Malik didn't, instantly jumped to conclusions he's had look i looked around the office i noticed this i even looked i did some research on this guy and well it does seem like he is the person that i feared he would be but i'm still going to take the job anyway and i like it because i don't like to use the word woke and whatnot but you know just looking at the fact that during the ella and floyd era i guess it's like hey you know what if there's a job i need a job regardless because it doesn't matter if my boss hates me it, I mean, yeah, I know I've heard this plenty of times in other shows and movies. Uh, or was it Cat Williams said this about uh, Flavor Flav? I don't care if these people laugh at me, call me names or whatnot, because at the end of the day, I still got to get paid. Like, they still got to pay me. So, yeah, you can call me what you want. You might not like black people, but, hey, come payday since I'm doing the job at your company, you still got to pay me. This ain't slavery. You still paying me. So, I do like this development for Malik a lot, even though, like I said twice already, it only took up as much time as it needed. 
So, let's talk about the rest of the episode. So it starts off at Calvin's loft. Miranda bursts in, well, you know, basically knocks first, and just tells uh, Calvin about the fact that, hey, I had a last minute client meeting with a person who's going out of the country. I really need this commission. Is it possible to switch days so you can watch Christian? And, you know, apparently this has become somewhat of a habit with Miranda where she's always moving things around where, hey, can you watch him this day because I got this going on? And Calvin's like, hey, you know, you're doing this a lot. Well, I don't mind switching with you, but with Miranda, I've only asked to do that twice because something came up. But for you, everything, something seems to pop up all the time. So she's like, fine, I'll ask Lisa. No, first of all, you can't just keep going to my family whenever you don't get your way or whenever you need help. We need to sell this ourselves because we're co-parenting. Also, the last time I let Lisa watch Christian, what was it? They tied Malik's legs with a G-string. He fell down the stairs or something. It was funny and cute. But uh, regardless, after that, he agrees to do it. But on the condition that Christian gets to be in his wedding, which is blackmail. But she's like, fine, but you get to pay for his tux. You got to pay for his tux to be in your little wedding. It's like, Miranda, that's petty. Now, when I first saw it, I'm like, yeah, that's Miranda being petty. But when I really thought about it more when I was going through my notes before recording this video, I was like, well, Calvin, this is your wedding and he is your son. So is it really petty for you to buy him the suit? I mean, sure. Yeah, if his mom doesn't want to be in the wedding, I get it. Not to mention, it is sad that what we are. Let's see. One, two, three, four. Yes, yeah, six episodes from the episode where you even brought up this fact about Christian being in your wedding to Miranda. So she's up until this point, she still isn't about him being in the wedding. That's that is kind of messed up. But yeah, I mean, hell, I mean, it's your wedding, your son. So if you had to buy the tux, I don't think that's petty. It is what it is. So we go over to Calvin going to talk with his mom. Uh, you know, Ella's working on her schedule, all the things she got going on. And Curtis was sent to the store. So that's Curtis' excuse for not being in the episode. He got sent to the store. But Calvin tells Ella about the Miranda situation. The fact that, you know, she's always changing things around. Well, I don't think she would do it without a good reason. Oh, you're taking her side. I'm not taking anyone's side. I'm not taking anyone's side. You know how Ella almost like singing every time she's like saying something. Calvin, I'm not taking anyone's side. I'm just saying. I don't think she would do this unless something really came up. Not to mention the fact that you work from home. But yeah, I actually got to go to the office tomorrow to meet with some big wigs because we have an app coming out and it's a huge meeting. So I have to go. And it's funny how she talked about not taking sides because if you go to season nine, look, I, I, I know it's like, Jeremy, why do you keep harping on season nine? Because I kind of have to because even though it was kind of loose continuity, season nine was not a good Miranda season whatsoever. Ella was almost always taking her side. And I'm like... Ella, like, that's your son. You're not even going to address how Calvin feels. It's like you just keep telling Miranda the same thing. Miranda, you and Calvin are adults. If you have something you want to say to him, sit him down and tell him how you feel. But now it's like Ella's actually giving solid advice because Calvin comes up with the idea. You know what? Fine. You said you can't watch him. You got a church meeting. You said dad has like a couple of uh, doctor's appointments and um, uh, CJ has physical therapy. And I guess that means, yeah, even though it seems CJ has made a full recovery from that accident he was in during the last fire he fought in, I guess he's still going through physical therapy, you know, just for checkups and whatnot. So that's a good thing. Nice nod to continuity there. And there's no way he's letting Lisa do it. Because Lisa will probably teach him how to shoot dollars from a gun. I'm going to teach him how <laughs> I'm going to teach my son how to shoot uh, dollars from a money gun. I'm like, come on, Calvin, that's hilarious. So he says he'll get Laura to do it. And well, Laura is going to be my wife soon and involved in Christian's life. And Miranda's just going to have to get used to it. And Ella gives some sound advice on this. You're right. Miranda's just going to have to look at the situation from for what it is. But also keep in mind, Calvin, a divorce and co-parenting, there's a lot of pain. There's a lot of healing. But sometimes when a new partner is introduced into this, it could erase all the progress you and your old partner have made. Sound advice. It's just like, yeah, this is the kind of thing that maybe Calvin should have heard when he first introduced Laura. Well, not introduced Laura, but when he mentioned the engagement. But again, this was still a good scene in and of itself. 
So after that, let's see here. Malik comes in. I already talked about that part. So we go over to the loft. Lunch time is over. Calvin made Laura a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and basically asked if he can watch, if she could watch Christian. And she loved to because, you know, I love spending time with him. And yeah, we never really spent one-on-one -on -one time together. And uh, Calvin's excited because, yeah, this is great because Miranda switched days again. But hey, I got back at her by saying, um, I'll switch days with you if you let Christian be in our wedding. And Laura's like, well, no offense, but why do you have to ask her to let your son be in the wedding? Because Christian is your son as well as her son, you know, Miranda's son. So she's just tired of Miranda's mess. And well, because really she doesn't want to go through with this wedding if Miranda's still going to act crazy. And she doesn't like Calvin's passiveness towards her craziness and disrespect. And Calvin says, look, I just want peace. Well, if you don't get Miranda straight, you won't get a piece of this either. And all I could think about is Greenleaf when Jacob told his dad about how, um, look, I don't want, I'm not worried about what's going to happen in the future now. I just want, I, I, I think it came to Carissa wanting to sell the land to buy a house. And uh, Jacob was like, look, dad, I just want peace. That's what Calvin's talking about right now. I just want peace in the home. And based off how Laura was renting the scene, I'm like, oh man, it's almost like she's supposed to be coming off as the unlikable soon-to-be stepmother, kind of like a what's-her-face from the parent trap. I'm like, but she's actually caring about Christian. So we go over to later on in the episode. Apparently, the meeting went very well with uh, Calvin and his bosses. And, uh, you know, he thanks Laura for watching Christian. And before she can mention, hey, there was a little bit of a hiccup, but... Miranda actually comes knocking on the door. Calvin, Calvin, let me in. Like she's a big bad wolf. And she just burst through the door. And apparently, I want to know why my child is saying that this woman scooped him up. You know, grabbed him up. So here's what happened. Even though there's a lot of back and forth. Let me just get to the reason. So, Laura says, I was trying to tell Calvin. He was jumping on the couch several times and I told him to stop. Because I didn't want him to fall down and hurt himself. And then the last time I told him to get off the couch, he said no. So I scooped him up to make sure he didn't get hurt. And basically, you're coming at me because I took the situation into my hands to grab the child before he fell, hit his head, and prevented you two from being in the ER to see him. So she actually explains. And Miranda ain't really trying to hear it but she says look i'm sorry for disrespecting you for disrespecting calvin for how i treated your child but i love him too calvin actually accepts the apology and says look you know what we i i, I accept that and we should have done a better job with explaining some of christian's tendencies as well as how we discipline him and you know basically explaining the methods so in these situations where Laura has this one-on-one -on -one time with Christian, she knows what's acceptable and what's unacceptable when it comes to disciplining him. So, he then tells Miranda, look, I understand why you're upset, but you gotta, you gotta stop coming over here and blowing up over every little thing. And on top of that, me and Laura are getting married. And me and you are co-parenting. Co-parenting. Co-parenting Christian. Laura's going to be a stepmother, and guess what? I want you to be part of this family as well. This reminds me of Will and Jada, and no, I'm not making fun of Will and Jada. I'm talking about Will and Jada, and um, Will's oldest son from his first marriage, how apparently his uh, first wife or ex-wife is always welcome to like family functions and whatnot, so they can, you know, have a full family reunion. I always like that about it. I'm talking about dismissed before the will book, before the entanglement stuff. I'm talking about, you know, when this was revealed. And I'm like, I really like that. Because not all marriages work out. Not all families stay together. Some people move on. But in order to raise the child the best way they can, both parents are still part of the life or the family. And I like that. So, even though Calvin is being very level-headed and reasonable 
Miranda's still on that shit. She just scoffs at the idea of, yeah, you know what? Me and you are co-parenting. And yeah, you can have this little situation you have. But guess what? It takes some time for more people to... It takes some time... It takes more time for some people to catch up to where you're going, Calvin. And before... This is my biggest problem with Miranda. She's always blowing up. She's always causing some trouble. She wants to be heard, but she never wants to listen. And Calvin didn't blow up at her. She He tried to de-escalate the situation. And while he was trying to get through to Miranda, what did she do? The same thing she did in the final episode of House of Pain. Walked out on him. Now, I'm not saying Miranda is wrong for acting or feeling the way she is you know, is feeling, but she should have gotten all the information before she decided to lash out. Kind of like Malik, how he considered the job offer, but also decided to do some research to find out if this boss is racist like he suspects. But from there deciding, you know what? I need to make the best of this situation. I want to be the best person I can be to make the change I want to see. And he accepts the job. Miranda should have taken what was said and said, you know what? Yeah. You are getting married. She will be Christian's stepmother, but we need to talk things out. Which she eventually says in the next scene I'm going to discuss. But in this moment, I just hate how Miranda was written. Now, let me talk about these last couple scenes and I'll give my thoughts on if Laura was in the right or not. So, Miranda comes back. Apparently, she had brought Christian and, you know, Calvin put him in the bed. And Miranda's calmed down and she apologized to Calvin for how she acted. And, you know, he apologizes for, you know, the whole situation of letting him stay with Laura and whatnot about telling her or whatever. But basically, it's time to have a conversation with Laura to discuss how to discipline Christian. And I'm like, this is all well and good. But I just hope that yet again, we don't have another explosion episode. This episode was good in terms of moving the story along with characters making progress. But then I hate it when a couple episodes later, in order to insert unnecessary drama somebody acts out of character and then a lesson is learned again and again and again and again with no straightforward conclusion almost as if it's a revol uh, a revolving door around the plot but basically the final scene like i said every episode has like the last 30 to 30 seconds to a minute which is just you know comedic fun and that's uh, Laura doing like a VR fight session training in case Miranda shows up to her crazy again. And Calvin lets her know, look, everything's all good. She's going to stop acting crazy. And it's like, you know, he lightly taps the device. It's like, hey, Miranda hits harder than that. And it was a fun scene in the episode. But do I think Laura was in the right? Now, like I said, this was a lot less severe than when I thought. Like, I literally thought that. It would be her spanking or, you know, hitting Cal, uh, Christian. But no, all she did was grab him off the couch. Like, this is one of those things where I really wish we could have seen it happen instead of being told, you know, how it happened. Because, like they say, show don't tell. I don't think she was in the wrong. I feel like it depends on how she did it. Like, get your ass off the couch. Or, or she went like, Christian, no. Because, you know, maybe he almost fell. And he actually got scooped up. And in his mind, ah, Miss Laura scooped grab me up. Ah! But not realizing, oh, she actually saved me because I almost fell and, but you know, hit my head. Uh, not to mention, isn't it like a glass table that uh, Calvin has in the living room or something? But basically from there, I don't think she was in the wrong. But I will admit, I do feel like Calvin was in the wrong because in Miranda's defense... She did request Calvin to watch Christian, and that was part of the deal. Fine, I'll let him be in your wedding, but you watch him. We switch days. But then he decided to pass off responsibility to Laura without fully having the conversation about how they punish Christian. What are some of the things that you need to watch out for if you're watching him because he's energetic, full of life? So it kind of is a domino effect. Where it started with Miranda doing her seemingly usual thing of rearranging what days she has Christian. Not considering that Calvin might have something planned. And then like I said before, Calvin pushing off the responsibility to Laura. And then Laura doing what she felt was right. Now, I, I, 
I, I don't know if that's like a straightforward answer, but I feel like uh, when it comes to who's at fault for Jesus being crucified, well, it was like, is it Judas for betraying him? Is it Pontius Pilate for bending to knee to the people as opposed to doing what he felt was right? There are like so many different factors. I feel the same can be said here. And no, I'm not saying that any of these characters are Jesus. I'm just making a comparison. But what do you think? I mean, I do feel like this episode was seemingly trying to make Laura less likable, but that's what I hate to see because we barely know the character. And given the fact that in the last few episodes have been somewhat Miranda focused, it really does feel like these two will get back together either by the end of this season or sometime next season. But let me know your thoughts. Uh, was Miranda in the right? Was Laura in the right? And I just feel like regardless of who you pick, we should all agree at least Calvin is trying. He's trying to be the best co-parent ex-husband he can be to Miranda. He's trying to be the best fiance, soon to be husband to Laura that he's trying to be. He's just trying to keep the peace, but everything around him is falling apart. So let me know your thoughts below. Hit the thumbs up button to show you like the video. Hit subscribe, and if you'd like to donate, feel free to do so on PayPal or Cash App.